Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl heading home after five years in captivity with the Taliban. He's in Germany right now. The trade-off, these five high-level detainees from Gitmo have been transferred from Cuba to Qatar, and our next guest there says they are probably already plotting their next attack. Former CIA operative Gary Bernstein joins us live this morning from uh, Tampa. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Steve. All right. Uh, unlike a lot of the folks who have been speaking about these five guys we let go in this uh, negotiating with terrorists scenario here, you actually know about these guys because you and your team were involved in uh, taking them into custody. Tell us about them. Some of them. Some of them. Well, you've got the deputy chief of intelligence, Wasik, there, who's actually the senior living intelligence uh, officer of the Taliban intelligence organization. The leader, Kari Amadullah, who was his father-in-law, was killed by an airstrike. So he's the lead guy. You've got a deputy minister of interior. You've got a deputy. You've got a chief of staff of the army. This group of men participated in the city of Mazar Sharif. When they seized that city, they killed six thousand Hazara tribesmen. They took these men and their sons into the street and slit their throats in front of their wives and daughters. These men are, are, are conducted a genocide. They are among the worst people on the planet. When they return, they are in, they'll be in Qatar for a year, being purportedly watched by the Qataris. They'll be at the pool for a year there. And as soon as that, the moment that year is over, they will go off to Quetta. They will rejoin the Quetta Shura. That's the leadership council of the Taliban. They will be rock stars within the jihadist movement internationally. So you have no doubt, Gary, that in the next year, while they're by the pool and gutter, just uh, sipping lemonade and whatnot, they'll be planning. And then a year from now, they'll be pulling something off. They will be back. It's not a question of if, it's when. These are the worst jihadists on the planet. These are people that, that, that brought Afghanistan back to the 7th century, conducted a genocide against the Hazara, completely stripped all women of all rights in the country. Mm -hmm. they, had, they, have, they had no mercy for anyone and, have, and, and literally are at least one or two had been charged by the United Nations for human rights violations and were wanted by the UN. So they have been sprung, although they're in detention for a year there in Qatar. Um, this is all brought about because the United States government did something that, to the best of my knowledge, I can't remember us ever negotiating with terrorists before. Is that what we did here? Well, you know, we have a saying, and you know, when you're doing hostage negotiating, you say commanders never negotiate, and negotiators never command. When you're in a situation when you're dealing with, like, if you had a plane load of hostages, you might send in some water to get a couple of hostages off, and that's kind of a negotiation. But you never want to provide them with a with meaning with a meaningful win. This was a, you know, you don't want to provide them a meaningful concession. This is a meaningful concession. This is the release of five people among their group of leaders. And it will, it, it, uh, as you've seen, Mullah Omar has announced that this is a victory. They will see this as a victory, and this will inspire the Taliban to continue to fight against us. Sure, and it could inspire the Taliban to kidnap a bunch of people to get KSM out. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You do, you do this for five. Uh, what are you going to do for KSM? Look, look, Bergdahl did a terrible thing when he walked off that base. And, you know, people say walking off. Well, there's no crime walking off. There's desertion. You know, mm -hmm. and they won't charge him for that because it would be such an embarrassment to the government here. But he put his family through terrible, terrible uh, ordeal for the last five years, and he no doubt suffered terribly at the hands of the Taliban. I'm sure he was abused by them, um, and he has suffered terribly. But the price we have paid for this is is so high. Not worth it. <sighs> I, I I I would have done everything possible. To, to try to, uh, to find another way. Uh, to, to, I, I, I would not have released those five. I, I would have done something else. All right, and you know, because you... Uh, I would want, you want to save every American you can, but sure. you, don't, you don't... You know, there's a limit to what you do. If someone seizes a city and says, well, you know, we won't attack this city if you give us, a new, you know, if you give us this weapon or you do this or that. I mean, there's certain lines you don't cross when you're doing these things. And we crossed it. All right, uh, Gary Brinson joins us today from beautiful Tampa, Florida. Gary, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. What do you think about that? Email us, friends at foxnews.com.